So when you were in second grade, you might have had a teacher send you home with a science assignment. And that assignment was to make a representation of the solar system. So you got with your mom, you said, hey, I need to make a representation of the solar system. And it doesn't have to be anything crazy, but it's due tomorrow. And your mom was like, ah, oh, you just told me now it's due tomorrow. Uh, what are you doing? Uh, and it was a, a whole fight ensued. You got grounded for a week after this, but you had to get it done. So you got some ping pong balls, you got some sticks, you got some, some cheap little paint that you had when you were a kid, and you threw together your model of the solar system. What is a model? Well, when a scientist uses a model, what they're doing is they're taking something that's very complex, very sophisticated, very hard to understand, and they're simplifying it. They're simplifying it. And they're simplifying it with the intention of learning something, right? Right. Well, economists are social scientists. Social scientists. So we are going to use all kinds of models. And when we make these models, what we're going to do is take down something that's complicated, something hard to understand, and we're going to make it simple. And we're going to be able to glean some knowledge from it. We're going to be able to learn something. We're going to take something hard, turn it into something easy, and then we're going to learn something. Okay? In this video, we're going to make our very first super duper simple model of the economy. But first, we need to go through some concepts. And before we can even do that, we're going to have to make stuff. And today, we're going to be making shoes. So, if we're going to be making shoes, let's start from the ground up, literally. We're going to be going into production of shoes. Okay? Don't lose me. We're going to be making shoes. So what are we going to need to make our shoes? First things first, we're going to need a spot, a physical place to put our shoe factory. We're going to need a physical place to put our shoe factory. And we're going to call this land. So first things first, we need some land. What do we need? What else do we need? Well, we're going to need the factory itself, and we're going to need some tools for shoe making, and we're going to need the various, you know, leather, whatever we're going to make our shoes with. So we're going to need some land, and then we're going to need the tools and factories and different physical items that we use to make our shoes. So land, and then these physical items, right? We're going to need some workers to make the shoes. And then we're going to need ourselves to lead the production of these shoes. We in economics call these things that when you take them together, produce things, the factors of production. And we have four of them, okay? Some economists call it three, some call it four. I like to, I like to use all four because I think all four are pretty important and unique. So, number one, I already mentioned it, land. Our first factor of production is land. Number two, I already mentioned it, right? It's these physical items, the factories, the tools that you use to produce things, to produce our shoes. We're going to call that capital. And I know what you're saying. Oh, no, Mr. Owens, Mr. Owens, Mr. Owens. No, no, no. Capital is like money, right? You like invest it. That's, uh, you have to get the capital together to start the business. That's an accounting understanding of capital. In economics, we think of capital as the physical things that you use to make stuff, okay? Now, what else did we have? We had workers, workers. Now, in economics, what do we call our workers? Starts with an L, labor. We call it labor. So, land, capital, physical tools, right? Not money, physical tools. So, land, capital, labor, and our fourth one, our fourth one's a little more out in there, okay? We need somebody to take the land, labor, and capital, combine it, and make it into shoes. We're going to call that person an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur. And so we're going to call our fourth factor of production entrepreneurship. So critical to understanding the production of anything are four 
factors of production, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. Okay? All right. We're all on the same page now. So, time to make a model. Got our trusty whiteboard here. We're going to make a model. All right. So, we are going to call this model the circular flow model of an economy. And what this is going to show us is the relationship between businesses and people broadly, right? Taking something complicated and making it simple. Very first model, okay? All right. So, if we're going to be showing the relationship between businesses and people, well, in our model, we're going to need some businesses and some people, right? No surprise. No surprise. So, first things first. Over here, we are going to put our businesses. In the field of economics, we call businesses firms. All right, firms. And all the way over here, we are going to put our people. And specifically, we are going to call them households. Households. All right. So we've got our firms, our businesses, and our households, our people. So, for the purposes of this model, and also generally, in the field of economics, we think of households, of people, as owning the factors of production. As owning the factors of production. Now let me give you an example I think that's going to clear this out. Okay. If you work at a job, and they're treating you like crap, and they say, hey, I'm so sorry about this, but we need you to work tonight, tomorrow, and the next day, uh, open to close, and we actually can't pay you as much as we did before. We're going to cut your pay in half. Sorry. What are you going to do? Are you going to say, oh, yippee, extra hours for half pay? No, right? No. What are you going to say? Screw you guys, I'm going home. Right? Right. You're out of there. You're quitting. So who owns your labor? Who owns it? Is it the firms? Is it the companies that own your labor? Mm -mm. You own it. You have control over who you sell your labor to and in which situation. Remember that. Remember that. So, for the purposes of this model, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship are owned by the households. By the households. And they are going to sell them to who wants them? Who wants to buy your labor? Companies, right? The firms. So, we're going to put a circle right here. And this is going to be... Our market for the factors of production. So, if this is our market for the factors of production, right here, who's selling into that market? Well, who owns the factors? The people do. The households own the factors of production, right? So who's going to be selling? The households. The households. I think this will be a little clearer if I switch up my ink. I know, multiple markers. I came prepared. That's what I do for you guys. That's what I do for you guys. All right. So, leaving our households and going into the market for the factors of production, no surprise, the factors themselves. What are they called? Land, labor, capital, and of course, 
entrepreneurship, which I don't want to write. We'll just call it E, okay? So leaving the household and going into the market for factors of production, the factors themselves, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. What about leaving this market on the other side and going into the firms, huh? Ooh, things are getting tricky now. Still no surprise, right? Going into the firms from the market of, for the factors of production are the factors of production. Okay, is that it? That the whole story? No, that's not the whole story. What do the firms give you for your labor? Money, money, money. Makes the world go round. So, going back from the companies, from the firms, and into our market for the factors of production, we have money. But specifically, we're going to have some fun names for it. For money earned on land, what are we going to call that? Hmm, money earned on land. We might call that what you pay your landlord. Rent. Rent. What are we going to call money earned on labor? Starts with a W, we're going to call it wages. Wages or wage, right? What are we going to call money earned on our capital? Again, physical things that you use to make your stuff or your uh, services. We're going to call this money profits. And we're, we're going to consider profits to be earned on our entrepreneurship as well. What do we call this money as it leaves? the market for the factors and goes into the households. Well, what do we call money that a household makes? Income. Income. We call money that a household makes income. Income. Uh, are we done? Call it a day. We got income going into the households, land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship going to the firms. Hmm. That's not the whole story, right? That's not the whole story. Leaving the firms is something other than money, right? Businesses do things for us other than just pay us, right? And we don't just want to sit on our money. What good is income if you can't spend it, right? You don't just want money sitting in a bank account. You want stuff. You want stuff, right? I know you do. You want stuff. You want shoes. You want cars. You want houses. We want stuff. So leaving our household and seeking stuff from the firms is going to be spending. Make this guy a little shorter. Spending. All right. And where's this spending going to go? It's going to go into another market, right? And we're going to call this market the market for goods and services. The market for goods and services. So, coming into the household from the firms is income. Leaving the household to go back to the firms is spending. Well, no surprise, we're going to want something for that spending. So going back this other way is going to be those goods and services, right? So, leaving the household is spending, coming in from the firms as goods and services. What are we going to call this money as it goes into a firm? What do, what's the firm's equivalent of income? A household earns income, a firm, a company, a business earns revenue. I know it was on the tip of all your tongues, revenue. So, 
We've got a circular flow model for an economy. Our big circle on the outside in green is the flow of money. It leaves the firm in the form of rent, wages, profits, goes into the market for factors of production and comes out into the household as income. It leaves the household in the form of spending, goes into the market for goods and services, of course, just the things people buy, and then comes out in the form of revenue for firms, for our businesses, right? But that's not the whole story. On the inside, leaving the households, we own them, the factors of production, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. Going into the market for factors of production and coming out the other side into the firms. And in return, the firms send us goods and services. They go into the market for goods and services and they come out into the household. Is this every detail of an economy? Is this every specific nuance of an economy? No. This is simple. Very simple. We could add all kinds of this. For an example of things that we could add to this model if we want it. There is a, a body outside this interaction that's going to have a say on every interaction every piece of this model and that's the government right they're going to dictate taxes and situations under which these transactions can take place can take place so this is our most simple model of the economy and we can make it much more complex if we wanted to okay but the purpose of a model is to take something hard to understand like an economy and the production of goods and uh, the sale of factors of production and make it simple. We take an economy, make it simple, and we can learn something from it. We are gonna make all kinds of models in economics. We make models that look like this, like pictures. We make models that look like graphs. We make models that are just kind of conceptual in our heads, right? And we make some models that just look like lines and lines of math. Models are very important to economics, just like any science. And this is our first one right here. I'm going to put up, stick around, Mankiw's version of this model, and then some important concepts from today. Catch me later, guys.